Hi, my name is Miles with JRI Shocks, and I'm here to just introduce to you our new Shocks to Dirt Modified and Super Late Model Division, both of which are the SB09 Shocks, one of which is aluminum for short track asphalt racing. Your Super Late Models have been really big in using these. We've won countless amounts of races with them, from everything from the Southern Super Series all the way over to the West Coast races. The Shock does have three different pistons available for it, a linear, high flow, and linear degressive. They're very good for your high frequency tracks. They allow for quicker response to the driver, therefore making a much better rear shock and vice versa in the fronts as well. They actually as well make the tires last a little longer, so a very good advantage to those in using instead of a 5.8 style shaft with a big body, you can use a inch and a half bore to just allow quicker response time in there. And you can still do different things with the pistons to allow even quicker response times and you can run even lower gas pressure as well because there's still base valve large nitrogen chamber in them. Both shocks can be coil over. This one we have already equipped with a two and a half inch IED spring. With adapters you can go all the way up to five inch. So there's a lot of different sizes, lengths, springs, a lot of advantages. Single adjustable, so just a clicker, low speed, so it only adjusts from about zero to five inches per second. If you're used to JRI shocks, it's our normal low speed adjustable clicker. Base valve is in here. You can drill out your base valve stud to whatever type of lead you'd like in there, and then a floating piston as well. So that's about it on the new aluminum style SB09 super light model shock. Now new to our market is the steel body for dirt modifieds. We actually let our house driver, Will Krupp, test this out past five races. He's won three of them. So this has been a big leap for us in dirt modified land. Again, it's got the same bulb as an SL14. We've just equipped it to be able to adapt to the new steel body, the smaller size. It still has a base valve in there and you can still run the needle Schrader port for IMCA. So you can still run everything there as a steel body legal shock for those two divisions. You can run the same pistons in both of them, just no adjustability. It is a non-adjustable steel bodied shock for the dirt modified side. And the same advantages as well between the both of them. It just seems to be where the drivers are able to pick up more of the track with these shocks than ever before. So it's been huge in grip levels for both dirt or asphalt. So it's been a very big improvement for us. Next new innovation is the high flow linear degressive piston. So we came out with this about a year or so ago, noticed a big difference on just low speed adjustable shocks. So we've since then been able to make it fit double adjustable shocks for your fronts of your super late models or for a pro touring car something along that line we can get a little bit of our cage on here to where you can use the preload of said cage and our normal double adjustable shocks if you've had them you're quite used to it but this will actually allow to run less preload and use more of that cage the piston itself a lot of linear digressive pistons if you can follow my hands here it, it kind of blows off and gets a little bit of high speed flow to it where this one goes completely off. So when the track gets really rough, it's able to let the tire just use the bumps and get through there without upsetting the car a whole lot. So you still get the thin piston, you still get the dishing of a regular linear aggressive. Again, just more flow. So rougher tracks, rougher street circuits or autocross events, this piston has seen leaps and bounds to be better than what we have had before. I'm Marty with JRI Shocks. I'm gonna show you some of our adjustability options for a lot of our racing and street shocks. Nice thing about our shocks is they're very modular, so if you ever have a single adjustable, you could always upgrade it to a double or a triple or a four-way, or if you're a triple, you can always upgrade to a four-way. So all these pieces are kind of interchangeable and can go from one to the other. I'll start simple and do with our single adjustable shocks. So a lot of our single adjustable shocks will have this blue and black knob. Uh, you turn it one direction to make it stiffer and the other direction to make it softer. So it's really simple, you have about 70 clicks of adjustment. The way this works is you have a metering rod that goes inside the shaft and it pushes a small needle into a jet and each click regulates how far that needle and jet are apart, which controls your bleed flow, which is what really makes the shock either softer or stiffer. Now you can also put little jets in here to control the flow for either rebound or compression or leave it open to adjust both at the same time. That leads us into our double adjustable shaft like this. Those can be identified by having a sweep window with two pinwheels. Now the inner shaft is the same kind of concept as this needle and jet single adjustable, but we add an extra external adjuster here on the top of it when the external shaft which is our double adjust what makes it double adjustable so down here you have your little sweeper knob this is what we call our low speed that has about 30 clicks of adjustment and that's moving a small little needle and jet up and down inside of the, the shaft the high speed adjuster is right here and this is adjusting the preload on the shock cage so we turn it all the way to the minus to go full soft 
And then you can see here on the cage, it's very, very loose. And when you add sweeps to it, which is adding rebound, you can see how it'll get a little bit stiffer. It's a little tighter. And with this adjuster, you usually have around 10 to 12 sweeps, and it's actually creating thousands of pounds of adjustment on the dynograph, depending on the valving. So that's the double adjustable shaft. Then for our reservoirs, you can do either a single, a non, a single, or a double adjustable reservoir. Our single adjustable reservoir uses a little barrel valve here. There are six positions to adjust. One is the softest, six is the stiffest. And it basically each little knob you turn to a two, to a three, to a four, just allows different flow patterns through the adjuster itself. Then we have our what we call our CD4 adjuster. This is our double adjustable compression adjuster. You'll find this on a lot of all, all of our four-way shocks. There's a little inner hex in here. That's what we call our low-speed compression. And outer hex here, that would be our high-speed compression. Run it all the way in to make it stiff, all the way out to make it soft in the low speed. And the same goes for the outer hex for the high speed. And again, a lot of these are all interchangeable. You could have a single adjustable shaft with a double adjustable reservoir. You could have a double adjustable shaft with a single adjustable reservoir, and everything's just very interchangeable. This clicker, the single adjustable clicker, is very common on uh, NASCAR late model stock, NASCAR tour modified stock cars. That's where you would see something along these lines. Another variation of it, a single adjuster, is our HSRD adjuster. So that would be basically just the cage adjustment on this one. That would be single adjustable as well, so you'd take out the inner shaft of the low speed adjuster. You find that normally with stock car stuff, NASCAR trucks, that kind of thing, k &N. Then we move up to our plain double adjustable shaft just like this. You see a lot of these in drag racing. You also see a lot of them in the SCCA TA2 class. That's what all those guys run. Step it up to our triple adjustable shock. You're going to see a lot of those in asphalt super late models. And then when we go to the four-way, commonly anybody who doesn't have too much rules as far as costs go or adjustability level goes, it's where you're going to see our four-way adjustable. Most places we see there for those is TA1 and a lot of other sports cars, GT1, that kind of stuff, um, IndyCar, those kind of places where you would normally see a four-way. And, and there are some super modifies out there as well that are running them. But um, those are just four of our pretty simple adjusters here. Um, all the other information about the adjusters can be found on our technical documents on uh, www.jrishocks.com.